السلام علیکم آم مختار احمد ود اے ورچوئل یونیورسٹی کورس لیڈرشپ اینڈ ٹیم مینجمنٹ لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹل مین ٹوڈے ول بی اسٹارٹنگ اب لیکچر نمبر 28 ایز یو ار اویئر دیٹ وی ہیو اسٹارٹڈ اے نیو ٹاپک دیٹ از دا ٹیم مینجمنٹ دا ٹیم کانسیپٹ وی ار ٹرائنگ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا ٹیم ڈائنامکس ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ڈیورنگ اور لاسٹ لیکچر That was the lecture number 27. I tried to explain to you the concept of team building. How one can build team in the organization. And we try to understand the importance of this teamwork. Because they, as they say that, none of us is as smart as all of us. So the collective efforts are, the teamwork is, that is important. And that is what we are trying to understand. This, when teams operate effectively, efficiently, they can achieve more. They can solve more problems. They can make better decisions. And of course, they are creative too. And for that purpose, during the last couple of lectures, I tried to explain to you what is this team concept. What are, the, what are the important component of this team? And what are those stages of team formation? And how we can build team in the organization? And what is the role of leader in the team formation or team development? So while discussing those things during the last lecture, I try to explain to you three very basic concepts or basic component which are required to build a team or in other sense to convert individuals into team that were that was number one selecting the right type of team members number two training them in a way that they should work together like a team number three linking their performance with the reward and based on this then we expanded and we tried to understand other part of this team building or team formations. That how can we make a team effective? And that was the focus of our last lecture. While discussing the effectiveness of team or building this team in the organization, we discussed that number one is the getting the right people, getting the right type of people on board and then determining the challenges which you want to put on them. Because unless it is a challenging job, nobody will put extra effort there. That is a common understanding. And then you need to prepare the leader of that particular team, that how he or she is going to keep them motivated, how he or she is going to keep them cohesive, and focus on the way and the direction for which they are together as a team. They need to train them. They need to keep them motivated. They need to add the value to them so that they should keep on doing collective efforts. And it is very important they should also see the big picture. That ultimately whatever they are doing in their respective position, how it is going to affect the big picture or whatever that organization wants to achieve. To understand this thing, again we discussed that this enterprise success depends on having the both, the right type of mix uh, within the team. And right mix can be the software part and hardware part, we say it. In the hardware part, it is the how much uh, technically they are sound, the team members. What kind of uh, uh, skills and knowledge they have about whatever jobs they are supposed to perform. And similarly, the management expertise within the team. And of course, the software part, a soft part, we say it, is the people skill, the human aspect, their individual personality part, their knowledge, their ethics, their values, which can affect the effectiveness of a team. So ladies and gentlemen, so that was the focus of last lecture. That was lecture number 27. And today, my focus of today's lecture will be to understand 
the concept of team based organization we used to have like conventional organization now more and more organizations are shifting toward team based organization and if you remember i tried to explain to you that it is not necessary that we have one team in an organization of course it depend on the type of organization and the size of organization that there can be so many different teams performing different tasks but this team based concept is very important and remember we are trying to understand this team dynamics the management of team so that at the end of the day we should try to understand this whole concept of leadership and team management as you are aware we have already covered the major part of leadership and now next few more lecture like five or six more lectures i'll try to focus on the team dynamics and for the remaining lectures then i'll try to mix them and present a different picture where you should be able to understand the application of this subject this these whatever concept we are trying to understand so this team based organization a team based work environment whatever they say it is basically based on the belief that organization's goal will be achieved not by individuals working together separately but rather the group of people who share responsibilities who work like a team so that output is more efficient and more effective so we call it team based organization where we have different teams form for different objectives for different activities for different tasks so this is the topic of today our today's lecture so let's try to understand first the basic concept of the team based organization these processes requires highly developed communication competencies from all team members that is how a team can work like a cohesive team my dear students i hope now after going through 27 lectures you are understanding this with different mindset with a better understanding and you might be understanding this that why this is important subject why we are trying to learn these very important essential components which are required for all managers for our leaders for all workers even for our followers even that they need to understand these dynamics if they want to perform better in this competitive environment if they want to survive if they want to make their organization their team a winning team a successful organization a competitive better organization the team skills usually are divided into two categories one is the task roles and the other is the maintenance roles of course while discussing about the team in beginning we i explained to you that in a team we have skill sets people with different knowledge base with different task roles they are coming together and working like a team but to have this team an effective team we need to have very strong communication system prevailing in that particular team so that this team should work like a cohesive team so any organization if they are thinking to transform into team based organization which has of course obvious benefits the pros we need to develop proper communication structure within the team members and each person of the team need to play its or his or her roles so that that team is an effective team let's try to understand the difference a characteristics difference between the traditional organization and the team based organization and remember what is team based organization where we have different teams performing different tasks 
And then one, another thing is the traditional organization where we have one team as a whole. Of course, these different teams in team-based organization, they also act as a unit and ultimately they are working like a team. In traditional organization, the individual command structure is prevailing. One person decides, the boss. While in, in the team-based organization, it is the collective vision, wisdom. It is the collective structure of decision making. And that is making it, this team-based organization, more efficient and more effective. Because once you are solving the problem by participative management, by collective decision making, the probability is, the chances are, that they are going to come up with a better solution, with a better problem solving techniques. Remember, in the team we have different skill set. And each person, in his own humble way, will try to give input. And ultimately, you can have better options. The next couple of lectures will be focusing on the decision making. And there we'll try to understand why it become more important. Why this input, more input for decision making is important. So, while comparing traditional organization versus team-based organization, in the traditional organization, we have individual command structure. While in the team-based, we have collective structures, right? Similarly, in the traditional organization, it is the manager who control. While in the team-based organization, it is the team who monitors the end results. They are not controlling, they are facilitating, but they are keeping in their mind the end result. And in the traditional organization, it is more vertical hierarchy, while in the team-based organization, it is more horizontal integrations. So it is more, because the team-based organization you have similar, at the same level, the horizontal integration, while in the traditional organization, it is vertical hierarchy. Got it? Similarly, in the traditional organization, their priority is the stability and uniformity. So they are less kind of prone toward any change. They are less kind of, they are not ready for any kind of creativity. While in the team-based organization, it is more that they are ready for the change. And it is more as flexible organization setup or structure, which can be a positive thing. The way things are changing, organization also need to make adjustment. In the traditional organization, it is the one best way to organize a thing. While in the team-based organization, it is the organization specific thing you will be deciding. For the specific task, for the specific activities, you will be designing specifically. It is not only the one best way. So ladies and gentlemen, similarly we can also discuss so many other things. But the point is that the biggest difference between team-based and traditional organization is that in the traditional organization, it is the set rules, it is the set direction that each person will follow and the manager need to control it and they are controlling it. But if you are expecting something more, then it should be the team-based organization where you have the opportunity for the creativity, where you have the chances for bringing more. It is always two plus two is to five. This synergical effect will be more obvious and more opportunity will be there that you can get through team-based organizations. So ladies and gentlemen, look at this slide. You can see the obvious difference. In the traditional hierarchical structure, you can see the vertical kind of uh, hierarchy where the, each position is linked with other position with a fixed line. And here the flow of information and communication is a very formal things. And that is how the next stages, you can have the vertical hierarchy expanding. While in the teamwork thing, or work team, 
you can see the integrations. You can see the link of each person with other person. And that can improve the efficiency. And that can improve the effectiveness. Similarly, here in the traditional hierarchical structure, we will have the positional power. That power and control can take the all the responsibility and they are the things which can get things done from either others, which can get things done from their subordinates. While in the team are set up, in the team-based organization, it is the redistribution of power and control. And each person in a way, in his or her position, they're also performing the management function too for the decision makings. And they all feel responsible for whatever position or whatever task or job they have been assigned. So that is making it more participative and that is giving you the edge. To understand the structure part, I think we need to understand the basic concept about the organization structures. The organization structure defines how jobs and tasks are formally divided, grouped, and coordinated. How can we know that? How they are done? And how a particular organization have designed their structure, their organograms, or their organization charts, we can say, is a visual representation of this division of groupings and coordination. This organization structure can tell us, as I said earlier, how jobs, tasks are formally divided, grouped, or coordinated, and how parts of the organization fit together to coordinate implies to achieve organization goal, and how these formal integrations or configuration of positions, jobs, duties, and the line of authorities among different parts are working. Who is the boss? Who is the subordinate? And who is going to ask home? And who is going to direct home? That is a very formal thing in case of traditional organization, while in case of team-based organization, it is a bit different. While designing an organization structure, the basic steps, the basic concept one should keep in mind that leaders or managers must decide how to divide the overall task of the organization into successively smaller jobs. Leaders and managers must decide the basis of which to group the individual jobs are assigned. Those leaders or manager, if they are, they must decide the appropriate size of the group reporting to each supervisor. And when I'm talking about the general organization structure, I'm not talking about specifically traditional or team-based organizations. I'm just trying to explain to you what does this organization structure mean here. And you must distribute authority among the jobs. And those, there are a few elements, the basic element, or the span of control is what this organization structure can tell you. Is this a centralized thing or decentralized thing that can be seen? What kind of formalizations of this which can be determined while deciding the organization structure of any organization, any group, or any team. And basically, while deciding the organization structure designs, we can divide them into two basic parts. And I'm talking about, at this stage, the theoretical part. One can be mechanistic organizations, and there can be organic organizations. In mechanistic organization is more a rigid and tidy control structure you can have. In other case, this is the organic structure. It is more the flexible and adaptive structure as per the requirement of the organization. So ladies and gentlemen, while discussing the organization design or structure, as I said earlier, we can divide them into two broader groups. One can be mechanistic or mechanics 
کے ساتھ لفظ ہے میکینسٹک آرگنائزیشن ایزر کین بی آرگنائک آرگنائزیشن ان دا میکینکس آرگنائزیشن اٹ از مور ریجڈ اینڈ ٹائٹ اینڈ آف کورس اٹ از سیم ایز وی سیڈ ارلیئر اباؤٹ دی ٹریڈیشنل آرگنائزیشن اینڈ دا ادر تھنگ از دی آرگینک آرگنائزیشن وچ وی یو ہیو دی فلیکسیبل اینڈ اڈیپٹیبل اسٹرکچر بیسیکلی ان کیس آف ریجڈ اینڈ ٹائٹلی کنٹرول اسٹرکچر یو ہیو ہائی اسپیشلائزیشن یو ہیو ریجڈ ڈپارٹمنٹلائزیشن فکس ڈپارٹمنٹس یو ہیو نیرو اسپین آف کنٹرول یو ہیو لمیٹڈ انفارمیشن نیٹ ورک اینڈ اٹ از موسٹلی ڈاؤن ورڈ اینڈ لو ڈسین پارٹیسپیشن وائل ان کیس آف آرگینک اسٹرکچر اٹ از نان اسٹینڈرائز جابس یو کین ہیو دا فلوڈ ٹیم بیسڈ اسٹرکچر لٹر ڈائریکٹ سپرویئنس منیمل فارمر رولس اینڈ مور اوپن کمیونیکیشن اینڈ اٹ از دا امپاورڈ امپلائیز وچ آر پلینگ دیئر رول ان دا ڈسین میکنگ سو بیسیکلی آرگنائزیشنل اور آرگینک اسٹرکچر ادر از مور کلوز ٹوورڈ ٹیم بیسڈ اسٹرکچر again talking about this mechanistic model and organic model you can see the obvious difference look at this slide the two models basically in one case where you have the high specialization you have the rigid departmentalization you can see different levels and each span of control is defined well defined and it is decided who is going to report home and who is the boss within each unit while in the open organic model it is the network basically it is a cross functional teams rather and this is the free flow of information is there and wide span of control more decentralized and low formalizations and that is the model which is basically the team based organization they are adopting and these are the structure which are obviously can be seen in the team based organization strategic planning assumes that the old structure which is more rigid which is the conventional or traditional organization structure may not work in the new realities in the new demand in the new environment as of today we are speaking so it demands the organizations think in terms of new approaches looking at those problems to solve in a different way and whatever potential issues are there so that has shifted this traditional rigid structure into more organic structure and basically why we are doing this because business as usual is not acceptable in today's environment things are changing and there are so many changes we can discuss which we can see in the environment because those macro forces those external forces they always have impact on the organization strategies and those strategies are strategic planning they have understood it whoever was planning in the organization that this rigid structure is not going to work anymore because now each individual they are playing a very important role they have to be recognized they have to be back up so that an organization can get things better than their competitors are doing basically in the team based organization they have more opportunity for the creativity they they can change easily they are flexible that is why they can give the better, better results that is why they can be successful so they that is why people strategically now they are shifting from traditional organization to team based organization and in this team based organization they can have the network structures like in this slide you can have the core team and then you have different teams like you have the manufacturing team you have the marketing team you have the distribution team you have the r and d team and similarly other teams which are required in the organization and within the marketing 
they can have again different type of teams performing different tasks different jobs and within each team they are more empowered they have the authority to make decisions and that is how they are the successful organization they are the winning organization let's talk about benefits of this teams in organization a team based organization we can have the enhanced performance that may take many forms including improved productivity quality the customer service or the product such enhancement results from pooling individual efforts in new ways and continuously striving to improve the product services or whatever they are doing so number 1 with the team based approach you can enhance the performance number 2 the employees can also get benefits teams can provide the sense of self control human dignity identification with the work and self sense of self worth and self fulfillment for which current workers seem to strive so if they are working like a team any achievement anything they will do will give them more boost in their morale they will feel pride they have the dignity and that is the very important aspect or benefit which we can get through team based organization or working like a team and not only this you can reduce the cost why because empowered team can do less mistakes they can reduce we can you can reduce scraps they can make less errors and similarly there will be less turnover rate less kind of turnover mean the less people will be going out of the organization and this rehiring process is costing you more the absenteeism will be reduced and that will result significantly as far as the cost is concerned because you are going to have the more efficient output the efficiency will be increased naturally the cost will be reduced you can have the organization enhancement other improvements the organization that result from moving from a hierarchical base to team base will be kind of innovation creativity flexibility and these are the few major benefits organization can have if they move from traditional organization to team based organization let's share with you an example of team based organization look at this slide and it start from the macro to micro levels basically you have the executive team which is giving you our arts vision strategy direction and then you have other teams at different levels you can have one team handling one kind of business you can have second team handling the other kind of business of the organization then within this team you can still have those sub teams at each level so ultimately this is one organization this is a whole big team but within that big team of organization and as an organization you have different levels with different kind of teams and each discrete team is responsible for a specific activities for a specific jobs and they need to focus within that part of their activities of course keeping in mind the big picture now this is this type of approach this type of structure in the organization can enhance the creativity that can have the cost effectiveness it can enhance the performance and ultimately the bottom line is you are going to be the successful organization you are going to be the winning organization and the research indicates that team based organizations generally outperform more hierarchically organized structure in term of product and services output less absenteeism fewer accidents more work flexibility quality is improved and overall job satisfaction so ladies and gentlemen i believe you are understanding this concept because as i said it is obvious there based on research i'm talking that in a team based organization 
the more satisfaction will be there. The organization will be successful. The cost will be effective. So that is the output. And that is the reason that more and more organizations are shifting toward team-based organizations. Let's try to now understand the model, how to create team-based organizations. So there is a, in the text, you can have six stage model, they call it, for, for converting in a traditional organization into team-based organization. And you can start from the small level and slowly convert your whole organization into a complete team-based organization. And those six stages are stage number one. You have to decide that how, why you want to go for team-based a team-based working environment. You need to review it. You have to prepare a implementation plan. So number one stage is you will decide, yes, we need to go for team-based organization. And this you will do by planning the implementation strategy or whatever. Stage two will be that you will review and design the support system what is required to make this a team-based organization. And as I said, you can start from a small, a one particular task and work with one particular group and then slowly build those multiple teams. In stage two, as I said, you have to review and design the support system for this group to work as a team. So stage three will be, you need to select the facilitator. You need to select the team leader and train that leader. After team leader is selected or trained, you will select the or develop the team. This will be the stage four. Stage one is you will decide, you will plan the implementations and then stage two is that you will review and design the sports system which is required for that team to work. Stage three will be to select and train the facilitator or we can call it team leader and t stage four will be to develop the team. And stage five will be that you need to review how they are performing and they need to actually perform. And stage six will be to evaluate this team-based organization system, right? Again, this is this six stage model they call it in the text for building a team within the organization. So you have to select one group initially, one activity or one a group of people, and you want to make them a team so that they should work a team. So in first stage, you will decide, you will plan. In stage two, you will develop the support system. In stage three, you will select the facilitator and team leader. And stage four, you will develop the team. And stage five, you will kind of understand and facilitate them so that you should, should you should get the effective results and team stage six will be to evaluate this whole we call it tbo a team based organization or it can be tbw team based work environment so ladies and gentlemen this was six stage model for team based organization talking again the benefits of the team based organization we already discussed that it is going to, you can have the effectiveness, you can have the reduce, reduction in the cost, and you can also increase the innovation when you're working under this team-based organization. Customer will be involved, the more satisfaction of the customers, and employees' commitment will be increased because you are giving them the ownership. Their morale is high, their satisfaction level is high because they, start, they, are start, they have started enjoying what they are doing. So that is where you can see the commitment from them. And you can actually, you are utilizing the skill of those skill sets which you already have in the form of team. And processes will be efficient. And it will be a flexible and same time responsible team which is ready for the change. And ultimately, it can increase the profitability 
and the long term viability of the organization. Let's talk about that there are certain type of checklist which is required for the team based working implementation plan in the organization. Number one, to what extent does the senior management team agrees with the team based working philosophy? And for any kind of change for that purpose, for any activities in the organization, the top commitment is the must. If they don't have commitment, then it doesn't matter how good the idea is, it will be difficult to implement. So top commitment is very essential as far as this implementation of team-based working environment or team-based organization is concerned. Number two, to what extent does the organization need team-based working to achieve its goal. It is also very important that do we really need team-based approach to solve these particular issues. So you need to understand these things. This is another check point in the checklist. Number three, are team-based working practices already in place in some part of the organization? If so, which part of the organization? And what kind of results you are getting there? That is another point you should keep in your mind while implementing this team-based concept. Another question should be asked, where should we start? Whole organization, one area, or what? And the better option is, you need to have a pilot part. You need to start with a small thing, and then slowly build on, because you also learn during this process. How do we move on from where we are now? That is another point. You need, to, uh, uh, you need to consider while implementing the team-based organization. What major changes need to take place? What resources do we need? So these are few points which are required while implementing team-based organizations concept in the organization. Of course, there are different difficulties too. There are pitfalls in, in, in the intro introduction of team-based organization and what are those possible pitfalls? Number one, introducing teams regardless of need. If it is not required, then if you will build a team, you might be wasting the time. You might be wasting the resources. Introducing teams without changing system, that is another negative aspect which can bring negative results rather than positive. Failing to train for team-based organization, this is another pitfall as a manager, as a leader, you have to understand that unless, because whenever you change, you need to train. And change is not so simple. And any, for any change, you need to train people. You need to train in a way that they should accept this change. They should own this change. You need to convince them. So if this is missing, again, you're not going to get the desired result. And if you're not providing the proper support mechanism while developing the team-based concept, again, this will be the failure. Failure of communication within, with, and between teams. Very important. Communication system within teams, with, and between the teams, that can create the problem in the effectiveness of team-based organization. Failure to establish and support the objectives of this team-based concept is another pitfall you as a leader and manager need to understand, right? Let's talk about now roles of a leader in the team-based organizations. Because we are discussing the leadership and team management course or subject. Now, again, in this team-based organization, the leader role is very important. First of all, I am sure that you are clear now what is the difference between a traditional organization and team-based organization. In different books, it is also written, or it is also discussed as team-based work environment, or team-based work. So these are the same thing. They have the abbreviated abbreviation for this TBO, that is team-based organization, or TBW, the team-based working environment or work. So whatever is this, but let's try to understand the role of the leader in this team-based organization. Number one, the important role a team leader is playing is defining the team's mission. Number two, 
building the trust and in inspiring the teamwork. This is very obvious because unless the trust is built, built between or within this team members and team as a leader, you cannot achieve the goals. So that is also the responsibility of the team leader or leaders of the organization to build the trust, to inspire the teamwork, to keep them motivated. And similarly, they need to uh, build a kind of system where the continued coaching, the mentoring is there. The coaching team members and group members toward high level of performance is very essential and also the responsibility of the leader of the organization or the leader of the team that how they should make sure that this coaching and mentoring should be there all the time so that your organization should be a learning organization and that is how this team is going to be effective and efficient similarly leader need to serve as a model of teamwork including power sharing he has to let it go to down to the point he has to share his power with his team members so that they should also believe sharing their resources their power with other people member of the team so that they should become a cohesive and inspiring team delivering team they have to facilitate and support the decision which a team is taking leader might not agree with one decision which is being a kind of with the majority group or team has decided so he or she has to let it go provided this decision is good for the team of the organization so he or she need to facilitate and support the team decision right and that is another responsibility of our team is to expand the team's capabilities. And that can be done with continued learning, with continued coaching, with continued facilitation. So expanding the team's capabilities is also the responsibility of the team leader. And leader is also responsible to create a team identity. A uh, leader is rather, of course, is required to emphasize the pride in being outstanding. So any person who is performing well, that should be recognized. And team leader is require, required to take the steps that that pride should be there. Team leader is also anticipating any change if it is there, it is in the way. And he is not only to anticipate but he or she need to influence that change within the team and within the organization. The leader is also toward higher level of performance. Similarly, he or she is also responsible for enabling and empowering the team members to accomplish their work. The team leader is also responsible for selecting team-oriented members and using technology that facilitate team works. So ladies and gentlemen, that team leader is playing the pivotal role. And that is why he or she is the leader. He need to keep their team members motivated. He or she need to keep them inspired. They need to keep them coaching because this should be the learning organization. So unless leader will do that, the team alone cannot achieve anything. But remember while talking the leadership process, we try to understand the leader and follower's role. And each complement each other. This is the role of leader to facilitate all these things. In the same way the team member's role is also that they should work with the trust, with the leader and with the team members to achieve the goals. Similarly, there are other things which can be done to foster teamwork through organization structure or policy to make them an 
team-based organization, of course, and to make them successful organization. You need to design physical structure that facilitate communication. And of course, team leader's responsibility is to create a structure or sport where communication should be there. But in another organization, it is the responsibility of the organization to design the physical structure that will facilitate this communication. And organization also need to recognize the performance of the individuals. And there should be emphasis on team recognitions and rewards. And they should also initiate some kind of ceremonies, some kind of rituals should be there. Whatever is achieved, they should, the team should feel pride of it. And they must learn how to celebrate it because that is going to boost the morale of the team, of the organization. These are a few other things which, these are, which are required to be done by the organization level. And it should be part of the structure of the organization or in the system of the organization that should facilitate the, this teamwork within the organization and that can make an organization successful, a team-based successful organization. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll stop it here. The topic of today's lecture, that was lecture number 28, was team-based organization. I tried to explain to you difference between traditional organization and a team-based organization. So the bottom line was, in the traditional organization, it is more as a control of the manager. It is more as one best way to achieve things, to organize things. It is more as a vertical hierarchy, while in the team-based organization, it is the collective structure. It is the horizontal integration. It is the flexibility and change which is important. That is why this thing is becoming more important. In the hierarchical control, it is the positional power and control which play an important role. While in the team-based organization, a team-based work environment, it is the redistribution of power and control at different level and working like a network organization basically. And then I discuss with you an example that how within the organization you can have different teams. You can have at a macro level, then you have, you can, it can go right away to the down level, micro level that you have different teams. And within a team, they are working independently, but collectively each team is familiar, are very much clear about the big picture. And they, then again, all those set of teams, they are working like a group in the organization and that is making them successful. Then we also discuss the six-stage model of team-based organization, how they are making teams in the organization. And then we also discuss that what is the role of leader in the team-based organization. Of course, he or she need to facilitate things. He or she need to kind of create an environment there each person will feel important. And the leader need to define the mission, team mission. He or she need to build the trust and inspire the teamwork. And the, they are also uh, required to create a team identity. They are also required to serve as a model. They need to facilitate and support the decision which a team is taking. Similarly, they need to anticipate and influence the changes they need to inspire team toward high level of performance. So there's a major role of leader in the organization if it is going toward a team-based organization. So ladies and gentlemen, the benefits are more if you're going towards team-based organization. But you have to remember that there are certain pitfalls too. That whether this was required or not, whether proper sports system is built or not, that can make this activity or this or different structure approach of organization is successful or failures. And organization also need to do certain things to foster this team work within the organization by designing physical structure that can 
facilitate communication within the organization. They can also need to emphasize on the team recognitions and reward mechanism. And they also need to initiate this ritual and ceremony things that they should learn how to enjoy or celebrate their achievement so that they can boost their morale and this is they should also be a food for thought for other teams other members so they should also perform better with this thought i'll stop it here hope we are picking up from next lecture i'll start discussing about the decision makings and how teams are making decisions how they are solving their problems so we should be able to learn better this team dynamics and ultimately this whole course or subject of leadership and team management. Take care of yourself, work hard. Till next time, Allah Hafiz, Assalamu Alaikum.